It is a beautiful spring day and you know Easter just happened so we're gonna plan a Halloween party. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's me, Jackie Armand. I'm back again with another spooky video. Today we are going to uh, sit down, or I'm going to sit down and you guys are going to watch me plan the things I'm going to do for my Halloween party this year. My husband and I throw a Halloween party every year. We usually do a certain theme every time. And last year when I first started this YouTube channel, I did a planning video where I sat down and kind of planned out all of the crafts and the recipes and all of that stuff that I wanted to do because last year we had a, a haunted hotel theme and a lot of you guys seem to like that. Um, a lot of you guys this year are watching that old video probably are also in the same mindset as me and are starting to think about your Halloween party even this early in the game and are looking for ideas. So. This year, we are doing a vintage Halloween theme, clearly, <laughs> and so I want to get some like ideas for that. So if any of you guys out there are thinking about doing a vintage themed Halloween party or Halloween uh, birthday party or baby shower or whatever, then uh, maybe I'll give you a little bit of ideas and this might be a fun video for you. And when I say vintage, I mean like, you know, this kind of bestial type of look or, you know, even just like the old really spooky uh, pictures that people have of like old Halloween costumes that are like really creepy with the creepy masks, like, and also just very traditional Halloween. So lots of orange and black, you know, very basic traditional games stuff like that so um and i'm excited i've never done this thing before so um i'm excited to get into it but before we get into the video i would like to say that if this is the kind of content you like if you like crafts you like tutorials you like costuming and just anything all over all around spooky uh, that you would give this video a thumbs up and also hit that subscribe button also don't forget to ring the bell so you can be notified anytime i post a new video it is Halloween all year long here, not just in October, so if that's what you like and you're into, then uh, stay tuned because it is a lot of spooky fun on this channel. Also, if you would like to uh, support this channel in a little more personal way, I have a Patreon. Uh, patrons can earn rewards that are as little as discounts on my Etsy shop uh, to even being eligible to win monthly giveaways. Uh, the giveaways consist of items that I make on this channel. So if there's things that you've seen uh, that you think you would want to win, like the Black Flame Candle or something else, then head, go ahead and head on to patreon.com slash Jackie Armand and think about giving a little bit of support. Uh, even just $3 a month helps so much. So yeah, I guess without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into the video. It's okay. It's okay. I know. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Okay, so the for normal formula for this video. There's a spider on the ceiling, and she's uh, very aware of it. So, excuse the little kid. Flashback. I downloaded it from Etsy. I bought it and downloaded it from Etsy. Uh, you just, oh my god. Oh my god. Holy s***. Mm -mm. End of flashback. Um, no, Lydia, no. No, you can't chew that up. Uh -uh. No. 
so the normal formula for this kind of video is that uh, normally I last time what I did was I made like a little spooky cocktail uh, and then sat down and you guys kind of watched me as I went through the process of planning my party and I talked about all the things I want to do the recipes the crafts and all of that stuff so I have this planner that I use in the years past I've not used a planner I just used a notebook I know I know Thank you for watching Toss a coin to your witcher. <laughs> so in the in the years past I just used like a notebook. But last year I found this planner on Etsy. And it was really great. And it was a really great way to organize all of my thoughts and everything. And I'm gonna use the same planner this year because I already printed it off my computer and everything like that, because I had it still on the computer. And it's great. I really like it. Now, I got informed from a lot of people on the last on the last video that I did that um, that planner was no longer available on Etsy. It was a like buy and you download it and then you print it out. And of course, my handy dandy husband who works at the UPS store was able to bind it in a little spiral. Now. Uh, I did find another planner on Etsy that I really, really like. The uh, Etsy shop is a planner mom company, and um, I talked to her and told her that I want to feature her planner in my video, and I did link it in the last... Um... <laughs> Make a biscuits? I did a link it in the last video because this one wasn't available anymore. And when I got to actually looking at it, because it is very similar to this one that I have right here, I actually kind of like it better. <laughs> There's some things in it that I um, would use more and I don't know, the layout and everything is just so much cuter. That's why it's moving, moving closer. closer. <laughs> it's something that I, that I don't know, I just thought it was a lot cuter. So I think from, after, since I already printed this one, I'm gonna use this one, but I think from years on, I'm gonna use this other one by Planer Mom Company. Now, um, she also gave me a little coupon code that you guys can use if you want to. Um, download this planner and it is a uh, thank you 2019. So if you wanna use that, you can use it and uh, get a little discount on it and print it out and plan your Halloween party. Basically what I'll do is I will, as I plan with this planner, you know, I'll show you what I'm doing in this one, but I will put uh, with editing the um, sheets that she uses so that you can kind of go along if you're using, obviously if you're using her planner, you can kind of see the corresponding pages that she uses that are the, about the same the the ones that I'm using, but it is very similar. Her some of her pages are a little bit different though. I like them more, but anyway, so that's what we're gonna do. But yeah, so I definitely recommend going and downloading that planner. I recommend using a planner like this for your future Halloween parties. I promise you it makes life so much easier to have it all organized like this rather than just like a spiral notebook, which is what I used to do. But anyway, yeah, so uh, that's the plan for the video. So first we're gonna go ahead and make a cocktail in the kitchen. And uh, so I will see you in the kitchen for that. And then when we're done with that, we'll get on to the actual planning. Okay, let's go. Okay, hey, we're in the kitchen um, and we're gonna make ourselves a little spooky cocktail. Now this cocktail is, I thought was appropriate for the um, vintage Halloween theme, mostly because it is based off of, I think, one of the most controversial Halloween candies out there. Candy corn. <laughs> uh, you love it or you hate it. I'm one of those people who loves it. So I thought we would make a candy corn cocktail. Now this cocktail is supposed to taste like candy corn. I suppose there's a way you could make it so that it doesn't taste like candy corn. I'll show the, you the ingredients and, you know, but um, it's also supposed to look like candy corn. So it's a layered drink. 
We'll see how I do with that because I am not a bartender and I have had problems with layered drinks in the past, so this will be an experiment. <laughs> so what you're gonna need for this cocktail is you're gonna need some whipped cream, some pineapple juice, and some candy corn vodka. Now, there's not a whole lot left in this because I've tried this before you guys are seeing it, and I'll tell you why in a little bit, if this works. The way you make the candy corn vodka is you take some whipped vodka, and you, um, I used about, I think it was six ounces that fit in this uh, mason jar with a fourth of a cup of candy corn and you let it sit overnight. And then the next day, most of the candy corn will have dissolved and this will have turned orange. Now, not all of it will have completely dissolved and there'll be some like bits floating around in there. And so you'll want to strain it, but basically this is what you're left with. Some clear orange vodka that smells very much like candy corn. Now, I guess if you don't like candy corn and you don't want to do that, then you could just use the whipped vodka and maybe use some food coloring to turn it orange because you are going to want it orange because that's the point. We've got the orange, we've got the yellow, and we've got the white. So that's how we're going to make this cocktail. So the instructions are you take a martini glass and we're going to pour a little bit of this vodka in the bottom and then we're going to take a spoon and we're going to try and layer Pour the uh, pineapple juice slowly over so that it sits on top. We'll see if it works. So, uh, okay, here we go. We get a spoon. All right, so. And there's not really any measuring to this. You just measure with your heart. Pour a little bit of this in. It's probably good. Pour the very slowly over the back of the spoon. And I try to do this. I like I said, I am not a bartender, and I always tend to have problems with this. So we'll see. Oh shoot! Pour some of it out. Yeah, it didn't really work. I mean, it kind of did. It looks darker in the bottom, but it's still like not yellow on top. See, what I did last time when I tried to test this out, I tested it out twice and I could not get this to layer right. And so like at, later when I thought about it, I was like, okay, you know what? Probably part of the problem is that this isn't cold and this was in the fridge so this was cold and because this was cold it was sinking down to the bottom that was my thought because you know cold things are dense or whatever uh so i put this in the fridge so it was cold and then used a can that was not that was room temperature thinking that that would maybe work didn't seem to so i don't know what do you guys if there are, are people out there who have tried this and it has worked, let me know. Because I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I just don't. I mean, I can see on the camera it is lighter on top for sure. But that also could just be the glass. I don't know. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I can't seem to get it to layer. But regardless, we're going to put some whipped cream on top anyway and it's going to look cute. Okay. And there we go, candy corn martini, even though it's not layered, but whatever. But yeah, like I said, y'all let me know because I don't know if any of you guys out there have any ideas and maybe I can try it again. But we're gonna mix this up now anyway to taste it because regardless of whether or not you got it to layer and look cute, you're gonna wanna mix it up anyway to taste it. And it kind of looks cool like this. It's like, uh, <laughs> I think it actually kind of looks cool like this. It's like a, 
orange creamsicle looking kind of thing. So actually, in my opinion, this actually kind of looks cooler anyway, but that's just how I think. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. It doesn't taste exactly like candy corn, but I'm okay with that. It definitely has candy corn flavor, especially after you sit there for a minute. The vodka, the candy corn vodka definitely comes out. It does give off like an orange creamsicle vibe. Probably because of the ready whip and the, the whipped vodka. But it's good. It's good. I like it. Yeah, so I mean, if you're like into orange creamsicle kind of flavor, you might actually like this anyway. It tastes pretty close to a candy corn that I think you could probably get an alcoholic beverage to taste. I don't think you could ever really get an at one to taste exactly like candy corn, but yeah, I think it's pretty good. Now that we've made our little cocktail, we'll go sit down and we'll start playing in the party. Okay, let's go. Okay, hey guys, we're here in the craft room again, and we're gonna work on planning. So I've got my planner here. I got uh, my little cat pen, it's appropriate. And of course we've got our candy corn cocktail. <sighs> Still tastes good. All right, so basically I'm just gonna take you through each page. Some of them are not all filled out because, well, some things I won't have filled out until closer to the party. But I'm just going to show you how the planner is, what I do, and, uh, you know, of course, the projects and stuff that I'm going to do for this vintage Halloween party. So, uh, okay, we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so we open it up. And the first page we have the costume planner. Now, of course, I don't have um, anything on here yet. Um, I will definitely fill this out, and you guys will get to see this filled out when I do when I do the video where I start my Halloween costume. So um, when I do my Sarah Sanderson the start of that that first video because I think I'm going to work on the corset first. Uh, you'll get to see the sheet and the plan for that then. Um, but you know basically you got like you can draw here what you want the costume to look like. You've got spaces to fill out each I you know what each item is, um, what you need to do, um, your shopping list of the budget, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's pretty nice. It's, it's nice to keep that organized and you can kind of like check off as you go, the things you got to purchase or do, um, craft wise for your costume. And then I've got another sheet here for my husband's costume, which he's going to be my Billy Butcherson. So I'm excited about that too. All right. So the next, what we got is we got our craft projects here. So, Going with the vintage theme, um, my first two projects that I want to work on are some paper mache jack lanterns and these little spooky Elizabethan crows. The paper mache pum pumpkins or jack o' lanterns on Pinterest, I saw that it said that you could make it easier and kind of skip a step by just buying already paper mache pumpkins and then. Uh, carving the faces out and then putting some colored tissue paper in there so that they light up um, and then of course you paint them and everything I really like these faces they've got like very vintage Halloween feel to them a little bit creepy you know kind of cool I think I'll try that but if I can't find already paper mache pumpkins that are big enough because I did look online and some of them were kind of small I mean I'll just have paper mache on myself, which for me is fine because I like paper mache. -ing. I feel like it's uh, actually kind of relaxing, but um, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to that. And then as these, these little Elizabethan crows is just like some fake crows, um, it was like some creepy paper, creepy paper. some crepe paper. 
and uh, craft paper and stuff to make these little collars and stuff. It seemed really easy way to kind of like put some things around that look cute. All right, next craft projects. I got these little Halloween treat cones and this like little fortune telling game. Uh, the little treat cones, I thought, I don't know if I'm either going to use those as part of my invitations or if I'm going to make them uh, party favors. I said this in my last Halloween planning video and I'll say it again. I like giving out physical invitations. I think it's fun. I think my guests get a kick out of it and it's like kind of a way for them to keep something to remember the party by. I usually always have something with the printed party information on it and then the something that kind of goes with it. Last year I did the little haunted hotel key tags, uh, which there's a video for that. You can watch me make them and the guests kind of bring them to the party and they hung them on the little hooks and then they got to take them home. It was kind of fun. And then that's something that they can keep, you know, and remember that fun party they had. Um, I did, you know, voodoo dolls once for a voodoo swamp party, that thing. You get the idea. And it's fun. Um, so I, and I was still trying to think of what to do for this Halloween party and I thought that would be kind of cute. You know, it's just um, some scrapbook paper, Halloween scrapbook paper and like lots of vintage themed Halloween candy, black and orange candy stuffed in there. Or I did see this other idea on Pinterest that was, um, they were little cloth bags and they were ironed on pictures of vintage Halloween greeting cards, which I thought was really cute. And then that was stuffed with candy and stuff. I don't know. I might, I don't know. I might want to do that. Cause that seems like something that can be kept easier than this is this is just paper. And then maybe these could just be a little gift baggy gift baggies for the end of the party. I don't know, but I thought they were cute. So I put them on here cause I do want to make them for something if, either one but they had a very vintage feel and I liked them. Uh, the vintage Halloween fortune telling game, it's mostly just a cutout uh, that I could probably print and make with some foam board or poster board. And it's just got this little wheel that turns and then there's like little fortunes that are cute. Um, a lot of vintage Halloween party games, when you look back, are fortune telling games that was like the thing even like bobbing for apples was like a fortune telling game uh whatever person got the apple first was like the first one is supposed to get married and, and stuff like that so like this is a common theme in vintage halloween stuff is fortune telling so i don't know i'll probably just have something cute like this i always like to try to kind of have like a little party game usually an optional party game and uh it just it makes the party more fun, more entertaining, and um, I don't know, guests seem to like it. So I'm still trying to kind of figure out exactly what I want to do, if I want to do this or I want to do something else. But this looks cute and fun, and it's something entertaining that guests can do during the party. And so I don't know. Okay, on to the next page. So we got these. So this is uh, the invitations I was talking about. This is kind of like the actual piece of paper, the invitation that has the actual information on it, party information on it. And I, I have this picture because this is, is actually something from Etsy um, that you can buy, but I just kind of used it as, I'll probably use it as inspiration and probably use my Photoshop skills to make something with this kind of feel, this vintage Halloween costume party kind of feel to it because uh, that'll fit the theme. I don't know if I'll do a video of that. Um, I could do a video where I just film myself doing Photoshop as, you know, screen record me kind of quickly making this. If you want to see me do that, I can do that. It would be a, probably a short video. It wouldn't be like really long. Uh, but, you know, if you guys want to see me make the invitations on the computer, I can totally do that. Um, that might be a fun video. So yeah, let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see. And then this is just, so this is a picture of the bread room from Twin Peaks. So this is just inspiration for another photo booth. I 
talked about this in my last in my video that I when I talked about how our Halloween party went last year and we had a what was supposed to be a endless hallway and it didn't quite work out in that respect with the effect we didn't really get the achieved effect that we wanted but it did turn into a really cool photo booth for photos so I think we're gonna do that kind of thing again but have it be a photo booth on purpose and my husband kind of came up with the idea of doing like the Twin Peaks Red Room which would be really cool um, and it would be really easy we could just have like red bed sheets or something to for curtains and figure out how to do a floor like a floor mat maybe with some tape on it to get that chevron look unless I can find one that's already looks like that this cheap and just make cool lighting with it and there you go I guess I didn't really explain like the format of these craft project sheets but obviously you know you've got what the idea is the category um, the source so you know where you found it and then this is all like your the supplies you need list here you can kind of check it off as you go and then the, here's a picture and usually what I did was there is a box here I just printed pictures from the internet uh, and in the size and then just like stuck it on there like a sticker um, I didn't feel like trying to actually put in the pictures in the file that was like too much work um, this works just fine okay all right, so here we go with the um, song list. So here we got like the playlist for the party. A lot of these are vintage Halloween songs. Uh, there is a playlist on Spotify that uh, I listen to all the time. It is created by a Halloween spooky blogger. Her blog is a uh, spooky little Halloween and she has so many Halloween playlists on Spotify that are like for any mood you could think of to be in. There's like Halloween workout playlists. There's playlists to listen to on a nice autumn day. There's, um, you know, vintage Halloween playlists. There's just literally any Halloween playlists you could think of. She has, there's like some Halloween and chill playlists. It's like, you know, easygoing Halloween music. And, um, I just love it like I can find a Halloween playlist for any mood on there and it's great anyway a lot of these songs on this list are coming from her playlist um, and then you know there's some that you guys have probably heard on my channel that I uh, have on my videos all the time but you know there's like a lot that most people know the headless horseman is a good one that like a lot of people know you know Jeepers Creepers Hush, 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 here comes the boogeyman. Shine on Harvest Moon is a good one. Um, you know, stuff like that. There's a, they're like mostly from 30s, 40s, some later, a little bit later. Oh, obviously, you, know, you gotta have the Monster Mash on there and stuff, but I just, I really love these kind of songs, this old fashioned Halloween stuff is what I really like to listen to. It boosts my mood. I mean, I have a Halloween playlist that I made that I love. It's got a lot of, a mix of everything really, but like, I don't know, there's just something comforting about old fashioned Halloween songs. It's just, it's good. Anyway, I will leave a link to her vintage Halloween playlist, but I would check out her profile on Spotify because she has some really great Halloween playlists on there. They're good. Okay. So, all right, so now we're on to the decorations. This is good. So good, okay. All right, so <laughs> these, we're getting into the part where I haven't completely filled everything out. So this is like your list of all your decorations based on room. So you got living room, outside, and then you can fill in these other rooms. Usually we always decorate the bathroom too. We go all out. I will probably fill this out closer to the party. I do have a few ideas for decorations. Like 
but it's pretty self-explanatory this party. It's going to be a lot of orange and black, a lot of streamers, a lot of little paper lanterns, uh, the like round lanterns you see, just a lot of that. <laughs> we also do have some cutouts already of a lot of the beastole Halloween stuff, you know, like paper skeletons, you know, that kind of thing. And then you've got this page where you can do the decorations floor plan. I might not use this page this time. A lot of times it is great when I have big props to figure out where they're going to go in the space of the room. But I don't have a lot of props for this one. This one, this party is not consisted of a whole lot of huge props. We usually do that kind of thing, but like I said, this year we're trying to keep it low key. So we're not going to do like a whole huge ambitious things that we really need a floor plan for. But this is here and it's nice to have it when you're planning things like that. Okay, so now we got the party planner specifically for the party. So this is like the day of the party. You got the schedule, you can make a checklist of last minute things to do, decorations, menu drinks, blah, blah, blah. Again, that won't be filled out, but closer to the party. Same with the guest list. That will be closer to the party as well. And then we got the favor bags, which will probably be those little cones I have. And I'll probably put list the items that I'm putting in there, which will mostly be a lot of like different sites that I've found old fashioned looking Halloween candy on there. Okay. Now we got the food and drinks going on, which is some of my favorite stuff. So this um, is like your whole list. So you got like your snacks, your non-alcoholic drinks, alcoholic drinks. You can fill in. I haven't filled this in yet, but I will. <laughs> um, I was too anxious to get to the rest of it. So, and then here you got like the menu planner. So you got appetizers, your side dishes, your main dishes, drinks, stuff like that. Now, again, I've said this also on my last planning video, but it's always good to have a lot of snacks, um, a lot of finger foods, and savory more than sweet is always best because people are, especially if you have alcohol at your party, because people just want salty stuff when they're drinking. It's what they want. And I just noticed that the sweets don't get eaten quite as much. Now, with this theme, unfortunately, a lot of recipes for vintage Halloween parties are sweet. So many sweets. So I kind of tried to make an even spread of sweet and savory. I'll show you in a minute. But unfortunately, I guess probably because there were usually a lot of kids at these parties, there were so much sweets. So I did take inspirations from not only Halloween, vintage Halloween recipes that were done in the past, but also just vintage recipes in general for, vin for how, like just regular parties back in like the 50s and stuff like that. So there'll be some vintage just stuff, party stuff on here that I thought would work. And of course it is also always good to have a main dish like a stew or a chili or something like that that your guests can have to really fill their belly because sometimes just those little snacks aren't gonna do it and you have guests that are drinking a lot and they don't have a full belly they can get sick <laughs> and that's not fun for anybody so it's good to have like a hearty meal especially if your party's around six o'clock seven o'clock because sometimes people just haven't had dinner yet they went home put their costume on and came over immediately so okay on to the recipes individual recipes okay so we got popcorn balls the recipe sheets are pretty self-explanatory like the other. You got your recipe name and all of the ingredients here. Um, I like to write all the ingredients down because when it comes down to make, doing big shopping trips for the party, I can mark, like, for some of these I've already marked off what I do have and I should still have by the time I do a shopping trip, but, uh, you know, it's good to go through and make a list 
all the ingredients you need. So, of course, we got popcorn balls. That is a staple for especially a vintage Halloween party. Popcorn balls are classic. This is classic. So, you have to have them. Plus, they're easy. It's like basically a Rice Krispie treat with popcorn. How can you go wrong with that? And um, you can customize them and put candies and stuff in them. So, yeah. And I have this Halloween snack mix, which is basically like a Chex mix with some, you know, candy corn, autumn mix, M&Ms, Reese's Pieces, stuff like that. Um, and then it's like got a butter, brown sugar mixture that goes over the top and it's baked in the oven. So I thought that would be pretty good munchy thing to have that's salty. We got these celery witch brooms, which are a vintage Halloween recipe. It was popped up when I looked it up. These have pimento cheese on them. I probably will do some with that and some with maybe peanut butter, but it's pretty easy. You just cut up the ends of the celery and you stick them in some cold water and it's supposed to like, they're supposed to spread out and bloom and look like little witch brooms and it's cute. These bacon wrapped spam bites. That is a vintage recipe, just vintage. When I looked up vintage party foods, this one came up. Um, it is what it what it says. <laughs> it is spam with bacon wrapped around it, and you brush it with some like it's like this mixture. It's like yellow mustard, maple syrup, and stuff. And you stick toothpicks in them, and you bake them in the oven. And I don't know. That sounded good to me. I like spam, so. But anyway, I thought they were cool. Okay, next I got this Witch's Brew Autumn Stew, which here's my gonna be my main dish. It's basically a, you know, just a good old autumn stew. And it's got, one of the things I just liked about it was that they cut the carrots to look like little pumpkins. And they've got these mushrooms that are cut to look like little skulls, which I think is so cute. So, but I love me a good autumn soup, so I think that works pretty good. And then this was another kind of like when I searched vintage party recipes, what came up was uh, fondue. People back then had a lot of fondue parties. And so I thought that would be kind of a cool idea. And so I can just cut up a bunch of meat and cheese and or meat and fruit and whatever to dip in the fondue. And this recipe was an apple cider cheese fondue, which I thought was perfect for fall. So, uh, yeah, so I think that's what I'm gonna do. It's another thing that will, I think, help people keep up this appetite. Uh, now we're getting into the sweets. All right, so what I got for sweets. This white chocolate monster mash crunch mix. It's basically kind of like a Muddy Buddies, but with the monster cereals. It calls for all of them, like Count Chocula, Booberry, Frankenberry, Fruit Brute, Yummy Mummy. Now it all depends if I can find the Fruit Brute or the Yummy Mummy because they aren't always in store, which is a shame because I love the monster cereals. Those are some of my favorites. I get so excited when they come out in the store. You can ask my husband. I am like, as soon as it's October, I am like hunting for them. And of course, Count Chocula is my favorite, absolutely. But I love the Yummy Mummy. It is so good. When we were talking about orange cream sickle. I love that flavor, and I just love the Yummy Mummy, and I miss it. That's kind of what this actually reminds me of a little bit, is the Yummy Mummy cereal, so. It's new fruity Yummy Mummy cereal. Big Yummy Marshmallows. So monstrously big there. Marshmallows. I could rename this cocktail the Yummy Mummy cocktail instead of the, the candy corn. It would work, especially if you can't layer it. Anyway, they did come out with that Monster Mash cereal this past year, which I don't know if any of you guys got to try it, which was pretty much all of the monster cereals mixed together, except for maybe Count Chocula. And it was actually pretty good. I liked it. So I don't know if they sell that again, then I could just use it. But I guess I'll just do what I have to do. 
but it was basically all the cereals and some you know white chocolate candy melts melted over it and sprinkles and whatever to kind of make a cute little crunchy munchy sweet thing but i feel like when you think also think of vintage halloween you think of the monster cereal so felt like that was appropriate now this is just something for me to put in here that's hocus pocus because you know me i have to insert something hocus pocus into everything i love it i can't get enough of it i'm sorry for those of you out there who maybe don't now they have this um these little witch lollipops they're like chocolate pops and not only did they look vintage so i can kind of get away with it for this party but it reminds me of those the witch pops that danny was eating in hocus pocus uh when they're at allison's house and they're talking about the sanderson sisters ever since i saw that part i wanted that lollipop is that weird am i the only one i was like that looks so good it just looks like chocolate on a stick like in the shape of a witch it's so cool like where can i get those them anywhere they don't exist so i was like well i'm just gonna have to make them so i found some molds on amazon and i will buy the candy melt colored candy melts and i'm gonna make these i'll make them for the party and if you guys want to i can make a video of me making them uh, a tutorial so you guys can learn how to make them too but uh, that's probably one of the most the things i'm most excited about is that really sad okay on to the next parts of the recipe. Okay, so we got these pumpkin jello parfaits. Now, this is another kind of, I mean, it's not super vintage, it's like I think from the 80s, but it is pumpkin pudding with a layer of orange jello on top and then like whipped cream on top of that. It's one of those vintage recipes that seems really weird. I don't know if it's going to be good, but I'm kind of really morbidly curious to try it. I did actually see a YouTube video of someone making these. And when they tried them, they actually were surprised that they were good. So that kind of makes me a little more curious to make them. So I added them on here. I'll probably put make them put them in little you know, little parfait things, but it'll be a fun thing to try, see if they're good. And then what we got next is the Wicked, these little Wicked Witch cupcakes. Everybody's seen these, super cute, really vintage looking kind of food that you would see at a vintage Halloween party picture or something. So there you go. All right, drinks. I forgot to put the names of these down, but basically we just got like an orange punch and a green punch. Not much a whole lot to say about it. One of them will probably be alcoholic and the other one will be non-alcoholic. Um, not sure which yet, but I mean, you just gotta have some Halloween colors. And then probably what we'll do is we'll probably get some like bottled soda. We always try to kind of do that, like some glass bottle Cokes or whatever. And if we just get some regular Coke and some orange soda, that'll be like our black and orange. So we can have those in like a cooler or something like that. And that'll be kind of like our add to the black and orange. Cause then we always do like to have more non-alcoholic drinks than alcoholic drinks, which I think I said this in my last playing video too, but it's just always a good idea. So people don't overdo it. All right. And then I've just got some blank pages for extra recipes if I think about them. Then we got, you know, our grocery list, which I will get to when I get closer to it and make the... When I get closer to shopping for stuff. And then, you know, we got a, just another shopping list, which is probably just like the decorations I need to buy, uh, streamers and such. All right. And then all that's really left of this planner is we just got like, there's a to-do list here. So you can write down some things like, I'll probably do this closer to like the week leading up. 
you got yourself now October calendar here to kind of map out some things. I like to really plan the month leading up to the party so I can make sure everything gets done. Um, this is just a week planner. I think you're probably supposed, it's probably intended to make several weeks of this because you're supposed to like, this is supposed to be each individual week, but I just do one for the week leading up to the party. I like to make a lot of food ahead of time. That's another tip. Foods that you can make ahead of time will be a savior. <laughs> and I like this page to kind of plan out what foods I'm gonna make each night. Like I try to spread it out, maybe do like one or two recipes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like figure out how certain things can be in the fridge longer or whatever and can keep the longest. I'll start those on Monday and such, etc, etc until I get to the like night before. And I usually only try to leave maybe like one or two recipes for the day up. Sometimes it's the stew because most of the time it's like a crock pot thing and you just stick it, stick it in the crock pot and heat it up. Or like assembling a cheese board, but most of the time like I'll have it all chopped up already. Like I'll have chopped up the cheese, I'll have they're in Ziploc baggies and the fruits cut up, you know, all of that stuff. It's just ready to go. And all I have to do is plate it on the plate and make it look pretty. The less I have to do the day of the party, the better, or I will be so stressed out. I hate having to do like a million things on the day of the party and running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Like I can't enjoy because and that is that's the thing. This is supposed to be fun. Throwing a party is supposed to be fun. And the second it gets too stressful and makes me angry or want to cry or whatever, then like I have to take a step back and be like, it's supposed to be fun. So keep that in mind. It's supposed to be fun. And then, yeah, here's the um, another thing. It's like, it says it's Halloween. I think this is supposed to be like for actual Halloween, but I use it for the day of the party as like the schedule you got from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. What's going to happen? You know, blah, 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 stuff like that. And that's pretty much it. I think maybe the only thing that I didn't put on here was like, I usually always like to have a trophy of some sort for the winners of the Halloween costume contest. So I always do a costume contest. And I haven't figured out what I'm going to do for that yet, but I will figure out something. Usually I always make a trophy of some sort or a gift basket maybe i'll do that like a little vintage halloween gift basket i think that would be kind of cute put some like you know vintagey stuff in there that might be cute as like the first place prize and then have like a second and third place that are just like a cute little trophy or something i don't know i haven't figured that out yet but that will be somewhere in there but yeah that's pretty much it i don't think there's much else that i have to talk about as far as planning this party I guess obviously look forward to uh, a lot of these crafts being videos um, and probably some of the recipes. Mmm, that was really good. <laughs> but yeah, I guess I can just do my outro here because there wasn't really much uh, else, I think that's pretty much it as far as like this planning this Halloween party goes. If you guys have any other ideas that maybe you thought would be a cute idea that I didn't mention that maybe I just didn't think about, like leave me a comment and tell me about it. Or if you have like a question about something that maybe you've noticed when you throw a Halloween party, you know, happens or, and you know, you have questions about that kind of stuff, let me know. Um, I'd like to, I'd answer it. Or if you have some vintage Halloween crafts that you've done that you think would be a good thing to shoot my way, send it to me, send me a picture or tag me on Instagram because I can always, I always looking for more ideas. But yeah, uh, so, you know, if you made it to the end of the video, awesome, thank you. And if you liked it, if you liked this video, then uh, give it a thumbs up. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, and don't forget to ring the bell so you can be notified anytime I post a new video. As far as new videos go, the next video will probably be my Sarah Sanderson costume, the start of it. I've got the corset. I still got to get a few more things, but basically I'm going to dye it and do some 
stuff to it to make it look more like hers and add some sleeves to it and all that stuff. So that's going to be like the first video. So look forward to that. I'm really excited to get that costume started. And then, you know, after that, it's just going to be a lot of what's in here is probably what it's going to be next. Um, I always try to film every single project I do for a party. Sometimes I don't get to. Um, if some of the stuff I didn't get to filming as a tutorial or a craft video, it will definitely be on my TikTok or my Instagram for sure. That's pretty much it for future videos. Again, I will leave links in the description to my social media, my Instagram and TikTok. Uh, you can check those out. I've got lots of past Halloween stuff on my Instagram and um, a lot of like Etsy prop potion bottle videos on TikTok so far. I'm still trying to get some more TikToks in. I will leave a link to my Pinterest board for this party so you can check that out. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll, obviously the Etsy shop to uh, get this plan. Well, not this planner, but the other one that's better. <laughs> And don't forget to use the coupon code uh, thank you 2019 so you can get, I think it's like 70% off. Oh, um, and then obviously if you're, you know, looking to, wanting to support this channel in a little more personal way, you can again head to uh, patreon.com slash Jackie Armand and think about giving a little bit. I really want to, you know, do more for this channel, upgrade more things for it, and just get more videos out in more time you know right now i think i can only do like two a month and i would like to do more but that's where you guys come in so the more support i get the more i can do for you oh obviously also if you're new here and you don't know i have two books on amazon one is a zombie romance and one is a vampire adventure story so if you're looking for something spooky to do in between my videos you can read my books and check them out. Um, they're available as uh, paperback and Kindle versions. And on the Kindle version, you can read a little snippet before you buy to see if it's your thing or not. I also do have uh, a sneak peek of the third book that I am, a third book that I'm writing right now that is on my author website, which I will also link. Uh, you can check out like, it's like the second chapter you can read. Um, it is about a young woman who is possessed by a demon. So if that kind of sounds interesting, check it out. I will let you guys know when that becomes published. But yeah, I guess other than that, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for sitting with me and planning a Halloween party with me. Uh, it was kind of fun. Um, again, thank you guys so much for all the love, the support, the likes, the subscribes. It means a whole lot. It's amazing. And, uh, I guess as always, stay spooky, you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Okay.